In the early 18th century, developments in medicine were greatly influencing the American colonies, at a time when the medical field was vastly unexplored. However, the founding of the Pennsylvania Hospital initiated a medical revolution. It established an outlet for physicians of diverse specialties to advance the field of medicine. As the nation's first public and accessible health center, the Pennsylvania Hospital reinforced the necessity of health care in America. The most obscure area of medicine was psychiatry. Many argued that psychiatry was too subjective and could not be a scientific study. When the field of psychiatry was first researched, there were many misunderstandings between physical and psychological conditions. Initially, seizures and their causes, such as tumors, were misdiagnosed as mental disorders. As a result, all mentally ill patients were contained in boarding homes and isolated from the public. Many historical figures occupied the Pennsylvania Hospital. For example, Benjamin Rush, a native Philadelphian, contributed to the Pennsylvania Hospital by making it a beacon for psychiatry. It was his volume, Inquiries and Observations Upon the Diseases of the Mind, published in 1812, that made Rush the first physician to deem mental disorders as more psychological than society's notion of it being satanic. Rush, here at the hospital, was really known for his interest in psychiatry. So, he became known later in life as the father of American psychiatry. But here at the hospital, he worked a very fundamental ways of improving the care for the mentally ill. Even though it would seem like common sense to us, it was actually something that they again had to overcome prejudices around the mentally ill um, in order to make that next step forward. Benjamin Rush was also a significant inventor for the technological treatment of psychiatry. He developed the tranquilizing chair, which was a device based on the theory that insane behavior was due to inflammation within the brain. This chair circulated blood flow by activating an electric current through the spinal cord. However, the Pennsylvania Hospital faced much opposition before being chartered in 1751. Dr. Thomas Bond, an American physician, was the first who proposed to institute a hospital. The idea for having a voluntary hospital in Philadelphia was something that Dr. Bond had in the back of his mind. Now, when he opens his private practice here in Philadelphia, he notices that there is a lot of poor people in and around the city. And those poor people needed care, and they usually could not afford to hire a physician like a Dr. Thomas Bond. So he talks to his friends about establishing one of these voluntary hospitals here. And people initially were not super excited, but when he brought his friend Benjamin Franklin into the fold and Franklin endorsed the idea, suddenly everyone else became very interested as well. When a location for the psychiatric ward of the hospital was still in debate, Paul Busty, a merchant and the head of the Holland Land Company, was a benefactor of property. Busty donated his 112-acre mansion and converted it to function as a public asylum for only half a decade until a distinct location was settled in Society Hill. The original structure of the hospital was divided into the West Wing for psychiatry and the East Wing for standard physical specialties. The central pine building of the Pennsylvania Hospital conjoined the wings and the architecture was completed in 1801. It was then Thomas Story Kirkbride who devised the first compositional layout of a mental asylum known as the Kirkbride Plan. It's published all around the world and people really use this as a guideline for what an institution should be like. It was almost the idealized version of the perfect nature of one of these asylums. And Dr. Kirkbride received great notoriety for it. Um, and even today, people will talk about Kirkbride hospitals or a Kirkbride plan. And that's all related to Dr. Thomas Story Kirkbride and this idea that came out of his work at the Institute of the Pennsylvania Hospital. As a result of Thomas Kirkbride's work, the hospital began to admit prisoners and soldiers to receive therapy for PTSD and other trauma, reducing suicide and incarceration rates. Also, functioning from 1804 to 1868, the Pennsylvania Hospital's amphitheater was another impactful aspect of the hospital. 
The Surgical Amphitheater, now the time capsule of surgery, welcomed any audience to observe and learn procedures. However, surgeries were conducted with unsterile instruments and would subdue patients through concussions or injecting laudanum, an opium substance that causes fatigue. Unfortunately, survival was not a reliable prospect for most surgeries. However, if it weren't for the amphitheater, surgery wouldn't have been added into the education of prospective physicians. In the present, the Pennsylvania Hospital progresses on many modern issues, especially in the LGBT facet of healthcare. In the late 20th century, an identity that did not coincide with heterosexuality or birth assigned genders was classified as lunatic. These identities were brutally rejected through religious discipline, shock therapy, and lobotomy. With this mistreatment, it also denied homosexual citizens of employment. The social stigma of the LGBT plus community inspired a battle, the gay rights movement, for civil respect. Psychiatric patients have always been a part of the mission of Pennsylvania Hospital, but in the, I believe in the late 1800s, the, there was a freestanding psychiatric hospital that was built over in West Philadelphia, the Institute of Pennsylvania Hospital. And so most, almost all of the psychiatric care was moved over to the Institute. The only thing that really stayed here at Pennsylvania Hospital were, was the psychiatric care for folks who either didn't have insurance or um, didn't have any resources at all, or, or little resources. Unfortunately, what happened pretty early on was the general sense among psychiatrists was that homosexuality was itself a mental illness. People talked about it being a delusion, which is when someone believes something that's not true. Um, they talked about it being a psychosis. They said that, which is when people have a break from reality in general, they said that people became gay because their mothers did something wrong when they were growing up. And so there was a lot of shame and blame and stigma that was attached to being gay that came out of psychiatry. Now I think probably what happened was psychiatry was reflecting the general sort of social understanding of homosexuality at the time, but medicine in general often gives a lot of strength and force to things when they come out and say, this is a diagnosis. The Pennsylvania Hospital enforced many social and surgical breakthroughs in the LGBT plus community. It was one of the first centers to invite transgender patients seeking gender reassignment surgeries. In 1972, John Fryer, a homosexual psychiatrist and protagonist of the gay rights movement, pronounced a speech at a conference hosted by the American Psychiatric Association. To secure his identity, he was masked with a large bag and referred to himself as Dr. Henry. Fryer then expressed the significance of LGBT justice and the stigmas marginalizing those with his sexual orientation. He concluded, be comfortable with that little piece of humanity called homosexuality. From Fryer's courage to speak for the suffering LGBT members of society, homosexuality was finally repealed as a mental disorder in 1973 and reparative therapy was prohibited by the American Psychiatric Association. Accomplishments such as this is what commenced the field of medicine to become triumphant and transformative. And it would not have been possible without the Pennsylvania Hospital being its inspiration. Without the establishment of the Pennsylvania Hospital, we would not have been able to target and cure diseases, allow the paralyzed to walk, or recognize the significance of psychiatry. Overall, the Pennsylvania Hospital took a stand to reshape the nation's perspective of medicine.